Go ahead and talk, Jason. Test it. You want me to test? Test. Just talk. Talk. <laughs> yeah. Am I on? You're, it, we're streaming now. Oh, we are. Yeah. Oh, okay. When people tell me to do it, I can't do it. <laughs> That's weird. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Amazing. Um, Alice, did you, did you get the job? No, I didn't. You did not get it? No. You didn't hear back from them? No. Um, what happened is I, I started cleaning my apartment. What? I started cleaning my apartment. Oh, good. It's still looking for a job? Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, like having your priority street. So you're doing well? A little bit. A little bit? You been doing the prayer? Um, not so much as I should. You been doing it? No. <laughs> he said not as much as I should, implying that you've been doing it off and on. Uh, Morning. Is he ready? Good morning. Welcome to church. I'm Jesse Peterson. You can get involved by going to our YouTube chat line there, and hate will transfer your comments or questions to me, all right? Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Uh, Alex, you didn't pick up the bike. No, I didn't. So I can pick it up right now if you want. Uh, you didn't really need it? No, what happened is uh, I, I do need it. Um, but uh, something happened which kind of freaked me out. So, I, but you still need it. I would. Yeah. Would, do you want it? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. It's here. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, amazing. Any questions? Anybody comments? Okay. Nothing. Anybody have a life this week? Yeah. You have a life? Did you discover anything about yourself that you didn't know? Or? Oh, the world around you? <clears throat> well, I guess the thing that I can, <clears throat> that I'm thinking of most right now is that I still have a tendency to allow the world to dictate uh, being content. I, 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 in, in short, dictate I Dictate what? I, I just watched the devil have conversations with me about being at peace. And so I was, I kept watching myself being caught in the world and my circumstances and having that dictate whether I was at peace or not. So oh, I, I kind see. of. You let I, the world dictate whether or right. not you're at peace. <laughs> right. By doing what? Allowing my circumstances to tell me if I was quote unquote okay or not. And so I just watched this roller coaster and I kept catching myself, you know, throughout that process. But, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I found that to be kind of interesting. But so you look at the circumstance around you and it determines how you feel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Amazing. That's interesting. I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. I would catch myself. So it was kind of mostly because I would have a feeling about it. Right. And I would say, oh, I feel upset about this. Well, that's interesting. I just, I was at peace two <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> and you would you look know? at the world and become upset? Pardon? You would look at what's happening in the world and become yeah, upset? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. In my, in my... And did you snap my, out of it? Yeah, I was constantly snapping in and out of it all week, you know. Yeah. I think that's why that was, I found it interesting that I couldn't just let my <clears throat> circumstances just be okay, regardless, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. You could relate to her? 
Uh -huh. And in what way? Just in the way of noticing how I start engaging with the devil and the ego and listening to it and then being aware and then coming out of it and then the back and forth of it. Yeah. And Are you doing a silent prayer? Mm -hmm. Did you forgive your mother? Yes, technically. E I'm sorry? <laughs> Technically, I did. <laughs> what does that mean? It means I called her and I told her that I forgave her. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. And how did it go? Mm. <laughs> it wasn't a total disaster. <laughs> it wasn't? It was not. No. It was almost a just total? I mean, it was okay. It ended up being okay. How did she react to it? She was grateful, but then she said things that... <laughs> You know, upset me. She <laughs> said things as what? That upset me. She said things to you that upset you when you forgave her? Mm hmm And did you argue with her? Mm-hmm. And why did you argue with her? I couldn't stop myself. You couldn't stop yourself? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I saw it. I noticed it. I saw what was happening. But I just, my emotions got a hold of me, and I couldn't stop myself. And so you saw yourself arguing with her? Mm-hmm. Amazing. And wouldn't stop. No. So you still hate her then? I don't hate her. You still resent her? Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. But well, I'm hate, working on it. Resentment is hatred. It's just a new name. Okay. It's still hatred. And so you didn't, how about your father? Did you forgive him? Uh, not yet. Not like directly. I didn't say it to him yet. You're not ready to be free? <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know. I guess not. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that people love their misery. Isn't that right, Alex? People love their misery. <laughs> they love it. They absolutely love it. I was uh, reflecting on how my country is today, and it's nothing like what it used to be. Zero. And I, I was watching a TV show, and they had this Russian guy on where they show a soundbite from him, and he was talking about how, and I, we talked about him before, he used to be in the, I guess the Army or CIA or the Russian thing, or whatever they call it, and he was saying that America is being brainwashed and, and destroyed, set up into a social country like, and he said it take two to three years, I think he said two years, but maybe three, to, to do that, because what happens is you brainwash the next two generations of young people, you demoralize them, you destroy their family first, and then you brainwash, you use the universities to brainwash the children, and you demoralize them, and, and then in those two generations behind us, and once you do that, it's easy to destroy the country from within. And I was thinking about how this country is now, and in two generations, maybe three behind me, have been totally brainwashed. They're demoralized. They don't want to work. They don't want to get married. They don't want anything that's good. They have no respect for themselves or anyone. And I can see how the government is now totally controlling them. And they don't even know that they're being controlled. They think that they're right because they've been so demoralized and brainwashed. And I was thinking, wow, that's interesting how you can do that to human beings. You can, like, it had to take the family, the father and the mother to agree not to raise their children, to turn them over to the schools and things like that. And how do you convince parents to give up their children like that? But they did. And then the schools totally brainwashed them he was saying that in the university, they've been trained, the teachers have been trained to brainwash the children, to demoralize them, to teach them false history and make them angry and all that. And that's totally happening. Uh, abortion now, and all the people are doing fighting one another over it, but nothing good is being returned. It's just more fights in, on both sides. But if you really notice, nothing is getting better. It's just getting bad. It's, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. 
if it should get bad. I don't know if it ever return. I don't. I don't think maybe. But once you destroy a country from within like that, I don't know if it's ever return. And this Russian guy was saying that this has been going on in America for a while, and that the Americans don't see it. And that's what happened in Russia and any country that you want to control, you have to demoralize the people. Isn't that a mess? Have you noticed that? I don't know. <laughs> you haven't even noticed, huh? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Does it seem, everything seem normal to you? Have, you haven't noticed that the generation after me, millennials, whatever you call them, and, and disease are more than bankrupt? They're all angry and insecure, suicide rates going up, uh, people don't want to work, these people don't want to work because the government has literally taken care of them. They pretend we have emergencies so they can take care of you. And then they tell you to stay home and work from home and now the companies cannot get them to come back to work. And there are people complaining about it, but they're into it. They're, it's like they're complaining about it, but they're into it themselves. It's not like, I don't know, it's a mess. Have you noticed that? Mm-hmm. But you've been really, are you a, a, are you a millennial? Or, or, no. I don't think so, not technically. Are you an old person? <laughs> I'm te- I think I'm technically Gen, Z, uh, Gen X. Gen X? It's the one above millennial. Oh, the one above millennial. Yeah. That's James. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> no, he's millennial. No, James is millennial. I'm, I'm old You're millennial. Now. I was almost Gen yeah, X. He's a beginning of millennial. Oh, okay. He's beginning. But, <laughs> and then they accept crime. Crime is being accepted now as a norm. And they, everything that was abnormal is normal now. And then the normal people are in hiding. It's crazy how things are. And a lot of people don't notice. They just think they go on zigzag and they shake the butt and, and it's a zigzag. I don't know what you're talking about. TikTok? And they, and they shake their butt, and everybody want to be famous, and they do anything they can to be famous. They say anything, act in any kind of way. And there's no love in the country anymore. It's totally no love. So that's part of the brainwashing that has taken place in America, is they have taken away love, and people don't respect each other. They love hurting one another. There are people who will literally track you down just to try to hurt you because they're unhappy. Pot and drugs and, and everything everywhere. And it's, the government told the people, you know what? Y'all deserve some drugs. And so we're going to legalize it for you. And we're going to have pot houses everywhere. And then we're going to make safe space for you to do hard drugs. And we're going to give you the needles so that you can do them. And now the police just walk by, look at them, hi, hi, druggie. And nothing, no fear of the cops. It's going to get worse. If you don't overcome your fears, you're not going to make it. Because it's enough to have it within yourself, and you're definitely not going to make it because this country is going to get worse before it gets better. And you can't trust anyone because nobody has love. It's crazy how it is. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Y'all don't seem surprised by it. Do y'all know it's happening? Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's what we're not surprised at. We were watching it. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's going to get worse. So what I want to do is deal with the biblical question from last week. And I have a question. Uh, why do you hold on to self-confidence? Is that right? Why do you hold on to self-confidence, Alex? don't have self-confidence right now. I, I'm sorry? I don't have self-confidence right now. Why do you try to? I, I try to. Oh, why do you, what? Why do you try to hold on to self-confidence? Oh, it's why do you try to hold on to it? Yeah, so. Do you try to hold on to it? Yes. And, and how do you try to hold on to it? So you keep your sanity. No, how do you try to hold on to it? By 
trying to be positive, but it, you know, I mean, it's like my therapist wants me to put me on a 5150, right? You know, so psychiatric hole. So I don't know if I'm going to be here next week. So you may do it. I don't. I, I hopefully not. She, but she holds the cards. She holds the card to your life. Well, if I say the wrong thing, she can just send someone over to my apartment, put me in three days. That is amazing. And then for the fifty-two fifty would be two up to two weeks. What's a fifty-two fifty? The second one after. If what? You, if you don't pass the fifty-one fifty after three days, you get a fifty-two fifty. Why are you going to her? Because I was, I went to a. I went to a, what you call it, a, a physical, and I told them I was feeling kind of crappy mentally. And then they, they asked me to go to see this therapist for. And you went? Yeah. Did they make you go? I didn't. So you. Made, now it's like I can't even bail out now. You're now subject to the government? I, I, I have 11 sessions. I've already done three, and I got emergency session on Monday at 10 in the morning, I phone one. And she could put me in. If Do she you wanted. see, you don't see that you dig in your own grave? Yeah, I dug my own grave. So what? Yes, I dug my own grave. And how do you feel about that? Stupid. Amazing. I mean. Have you been doing the prayer? No, I haven't. I've been so preoccupied with all this other stuff and everything, trying to, I'm nervous about Monday at 10 a.m. <laughs> whether they're going to come to my house and put me in a 72-hour psychiatric hole. And then I don't know if I could pass the 72 hours, so then they're going to put me in for that. You, you know what's interesting is it's interesting watching you destroy yourself. It's nobody but you that's doing it because you listen to the spirit of evil. And it's interesting in watching you do it, and nobody can do anything about it. There's not one human being that can stop you from destroying yourself. And you're a good example of why each individual has to take control of their own life because no one else can do it for them. And it's, no one can save you, only you can save you, and nobody else can. So all your family, your friends, and everybody just watch you destroy yourself. Even the advice that they give you, you won't take it. But you take the advice from the devil. But you won't take sound advice that will bring you out of all that stuff. You only listen to the devil in your imagination and outside, inside of others. It's interesting to see that. Have y'all noticed that? Then you watching this man literally, he come every Sunday that he can. You give him the, the best advice. Do the silent prayer. Go and forgive and just watch those thoughts. You are not your thoughts, Stop letting, but he would do everything mm -hmm. but that. And he's digging a hole for himself. And no one can stop. Isn't that crazy? But that's an example of how it is for each and every adult. Nobody can stop you. You just have to suffer and die. And you notice how God is not stopping him. God and his son, they're having some, oh, let's see, what type of roles they're having. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. He said they're having chocolate roll with the coffee today. And they're just, <laughs> they're just sitting back this morning having hot cafe mocha with chocolate roll this morning. And they're just watching you do it. They won't stop you. But the average person that, they'll say, why, do, why doesn't God stop him? Why is God letting this happen? <laughs> it's not God that's letting it happen. It's you that letting this happen. And there's nothing. Do you notice that we notice you destroying yourself and nobody can do anything about it? Yes. It's, do you notice you don't taste advice that can help you? It's, it's just. Have you noticed that? Yes, I guess I have. You, you've noticed that you're not taking advice from anyone that can help you? The advice that can help you? Well, seeing the therapist. Have you noticed that? Yeah, yes, yes. And what is it like? You take the wrong advice, but not the right advice that will help you. What is that like for you? Just so that other people can understand it too. What is that like for you, refusing to take the advice that's going to help you, 
but take all the advice that's not going to help you. I'm making a lot of bad decisions. Uh, no, but what is that like? You like doing that? No, I don't. But you, why do you do it then? Because I'm in a bad head space. I, oh, okay. I, I did the sun prayer for a while, That's, and then I was doing it, and then I was, all of a sudden I forgot about it for some reason or something. Right. But there are a whole lot of people like you. You're not the only person in the world like this. It's just that we just happen to know you. But amazing. Um, anybody want to respond to the biblical question? Anybody thought about it this week? Yes, sir. Okay. Is this your first time here? My second time. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I haven't been here though since I think December or November. Well, okay. Um, but uh, like recently, like uh, speak up for me. Recently, like the last month, um, my mom actually uh, had a stroke, and uh, she uh, was getting better from the stroke. It wasn't. It was a, a hemorrhagic stroke, you know. And she uh, was really like delicate in the beginning, but she was able to recuperate and everything like that. And, and thank God she she was doing better and stuff. And when she came home. Um, it was me and my grandma that were there to take care of her and stuff. And that, that day that she came home, she was just very, like, depressed, very down, you know. And uh, the next day, um, all day she was depressed again. I was trying to, like, tell her, like, come on, Mom, let's go for a walk or let's do your exercises and stuff. And uh, she ended up trying to, she actually tried to commit suicide. And she took some, she overdosed on some pills later that night. And... Uh, I went to go get a coffee. I didn't know she had did that. She asked me, can, I, can you make me a coffee? You know, and um, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go get one from next door, from the little liquor store next door or whatever. And I came, I got the coffee, and she was just like falling asleep. And it, it was weird. I was like, Ma, you all right? Like, here's your coffee. And, you know, um, so I, I watched her, like, uh, like kind of like, like, you know, hurt herself. And uh, I called the police, and they came, and we went to the hospital. You know, and um, she was actually, like, she's good now, and thank God, like, she uh, is really trying hard to, to do better for herself. You know, I told her that I didn't judge her for what she did, that I do discern that it was wrong, and it was selfish for what she did, but I, I told her, like, you know, I love her, I'm here for, their, I'm here for her, where we all love her, you know. Um, yeah, just, uh, she's, like, about 49 years old. Yeah, and uh, she so really she had strong. a stroke, and then but she survived that. Yeah, and she came home, and then she took the pills to kill herself. Yeah, and and you said thank God that she didn't die. Yeah, and why? Because uh, she would just leave a lot of hurt, like for everybody around her. You know, like not not myself. I did tell her that I'm not sad for her. That I'm really strong for her. You know, like my grandma told me on the phone, like when we were talking to her. At home, I was with my grandma, my great grandma, and my grandma was like, "Oh, tell her that we're all sad for her." And, Speak up a little bit. Uh, my grandma told me to tell her that we're all sad for her. And, and why I, were you guys sad for? Well, they were sad because of the situation, you know, but that why, she put uh, herself in. Was that helping the situation? No, that's why I told my mom that I, I'm not sad for her. I said, "Everybody, no. wa my grandma wants me to tell you that they're all sad for you, but I'm strong for you." You know, and, uh, and how you you were strong for her? Yeah, because and how were you doing that? Just by uh, well, doing the silent prayer really helped. I'm not Were you lie. strong for yourself or for her? The silent prayer. Were you strong for your grandmother or for yourself? For for me and and for everybody around. And me. how were you strong for them? Just by not um, not like showing any weakness, uh, being able to lead. You know, like uh, take my grandma to go visit, take my my grandmother, and speaking to my mom. You know, letting her know that, like, she has a therapist, you know, and, and I, I didn't believe that the therapist helped her because look at the situation she put herself into. Yeah. You know, and I told her all that stuff is within, like how you say that, that the kingdom of heaven is within, that she's not alone because she always feels that she is alone. But it, it is within, like, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is she seeing Alice therapy? The same one he's seeing? Oh, I don't know. Oh. But no, uh, something like that. <laughs> was a therapist. Amazing. Yeah. Well, good, man. So, or she's, she's being strong, though. She is uh, strong now. You know? She is? Yeah. She's she doesn't strong. want to kill herself anymore? I don't think so. Why does she want to kill herself? She just, uh, like, feels alone and, like, very lonely, nothing to do. Um, she's disabled. She's just always home, 
Yeah. Oh, I see. But she listens to the thoughts, and I, I do tell her not to listen to the thoughts and to do the silent prayer. And yeah. I just try to lead by example. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty much. Amazing. Yeah. Interesting. Did anybody pay attention to the biblical question this week? Anybody want to share about it? <laughs> I share about it. The, the biblical question? About oh, okay. Why do you, what's the biblical question? Do you try to hold on to self-confidence? I, I don't try to hold on really any to anything. I, How about self-confidence? Uh, self-confidence, I, I kind of just let go and let God at this point. Um, I pretty much just let, I, I'm really not confident in, in my decisions at all. Um, because it could easily, it, it, I don't know what, ha what could happen the next hour, the next day, the next week. So you don't so, try to hold on to self confidence. I don't try to hold on to it because I don't. Anything can happen and flip your world upside down. Oh, okay. So I just stay on, hold on to faith. I mean, that's really all we got, I believe. Oh, okay. Amazing. How about you? Then I come to you. Do you do you, you think about the question this week? Yes. And what you come up with? I don't. I don't hold on to it, nor do I let go of it. I don't think about self-confidence. Did you, before you realized, did you used to try to hold on to self-confidence? No. You never have in your whole life? Never. Oh, because okay. I, it goes back to me, to the biblical question from last week about idols. Right. Um, I don't consider myself above anyone or uh, inferior to anyone and vice versa. So how I present myself to one is how I present myself to everyone, even children. So I've never even thought about self-confidence. I've never consciously said, oh, I need to have self-confidence. How do I build that up? I just am what, what I am. So you, when you were a teenager at any point in life, you never tried to build self-confidence? Never. Nice. Oh, okay. Anybody else? Yes, Frankie. So that, that's a pretty big topic for me, uh, you know, as a man growing up in, you know. Why do you try to hold on to self-confidence? It's part of your manhood, you know, to, to have strength and to, to be, you know, positive and be directive because other people are looking up to you. Other, you have responsibilities. And What's your responsibility? What's that? What's your responsibility? Um, when you say you have responsibility, what do you paying mean? Paying the bills, taking care of people, uh, oh. organizing, setting up something for the future, and and uh, uh, that's it's a lot. I mean, you gotta you have to put. I used to put up a false face. It wasn't that way inside, but I had to I had to kind of man up. That's what they call it, manning up. Uh, you know, because uh, weakness brings weakness. Uh, you know, a coward dies a thousand deaths. And uh, so if you're not confident, you know, in what you're doing and, you know, people, you know, they get, they go down. And so, I, you know, I was so kind of have, proud of with that. You try to hold on to it because if you didn't have it, other people may not they need have it. it. No, they need it. They need to see me strong. They need to see me strong and, and take care of things because, they're they're drawn off of me, you know. You know, my mom. I I in a sense came became the the husband to my mom. You know, I'm, I was the boss. <laughs> Old fashioned oh, yeah. Hispanic families, the oldest male is brought up to be the leader, and that was me. And so, uh, okay, I'm the man now. And so you have confidence. Uh, I had confidence and. Uh, Do you have self confidence now? It, I, you know, I, I lost it because it became a, it was a war between my. Oh, you said self. you at one time were trying to have it, but now you don't have yeah, it. Yeah, because I was raised with that. I was oh, I raised see. with that. Okay. My father would instill that in me and say, yeah. "This is." I would see it in my father. He had a toughness and strength, but you know, inside he had he had hell he was dealing with that I I can I look back and see now, and and so did I. And so, and so when you lost it, did the people that were looking up to you fall apart? Yeah. They fell apart? Yeah. And so when you had self-confidence, they were not falling apart? 
you know what, I can't pick out each situation, okay, this is because I did this. No, 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 I'm asking you, when you had self, you say you had to have it so that people looking up to you yeah. would not fall apart, right? Yeah. And so as long as you had it, they did not fall apart for the most part? For the most part, yeah. And then when you lost it, did they fall apart? Everything fell apart. My did whole world fell apart? Fell, yes, yes, everything fell apart. I fell apart, you know, so that encouraged me to, you know, to be stronger. And that's that war that I was telling you. I was at war with myself. And um, it, you know, it was like you're getting high or something like that. I had to, uh, I had to uh, find God in a way. I had to find God mm -hmm. and give it over to him and, and kind of let him handle things. And when that happened, it brought peace to me. You know, so uh, having confidence. But I'm a little confused. Do you have self confidence now, or you don't have it? No, I don't. I don't have it. I had it, and I had it very strongly. And but why you didn't get it back? I I gave it up. Uh, oh. I released it. You know, okay. I, I stopped trying to play God. I stopped trying to uh, be in control, controlling myself, and I and I gave it to Him, and and with Him. I have faith now. I'm, I'm not afraid of situations because some things are very risky. Some things are life threatening, and you know it's up to you're making the decision. You're playing God, and I was playing God. Okay, amazing. Yes. My turn. Did you? Why do you try to hold on to self confidence? Um, you guys, I hope you're yeah. thinking about this stuff because if yeah, not, you're going to end up in the slaughterhouse with Alex, because the devil is not playing around. And this year, you have to work on yourself. You really do have to do the work. Yes. I try to hold on to it, because that's how I've always been. That's how I grew up. I grew up, I wasn't even taught to me. But I always just had this, um, I've always had this impression. What I'm trying to say is, is, I've always thought of myself as someone that could do anything. Like, I never really. I, I, like I'll see a mechanic, and I never thought that they were that they had some special knowledge. That's why I YouTube everything. I do everything with me. I, I fix my own car. I do everything. Right. I've always thought that I can do anything if I just put the work in, and so uh, it's kind of I've kind of just grown up like that with like a habit of 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 thinking that I can do anything. So so I, I built myself up like that, if that makes sense. Okay. And so that's how I've always thought. That's why I, I feel it. I think that's why I try to hold on to it. And I've even found myself getting good at some of those things. And then I find, and then I have like this confidence in that. Like, I don't know, whatever. Like I cooked for many years. And, and uh, um, like as a, as a job, I mean, I cooked as a, a cook. And, and so I got good at that. And I had, I had like a confidence in that. But it's not a confidence that, that lasted because a social situation or a thought could just shake me. Yeah. But that's how I that's how I've built myself up. That's why I try to hold on. And to do it. you have self confidence now? Um sometimes. Sometimes. Right. And where do you get it from? From a feeling. What? From a feeling. <laughs> And what does the self confidence feeling feel like? Feels good. It just feels like <laughs> it just feels like I got it. Like it feels like I'm fine. Like mm -hmm. I know the answer. I can do the thing. I have the skill. And do you hold on to that? Uh, well, now that you ask me like this, not so much really lately. But why don't you hold I on do. to it if it's feel good? Because I know it's false. I know it's false because oh, I, I know that now. And um and. Um, that's why I try not to hold on to it. Oh, okay. So you don't have it anymore? Um, no, I still do have that false kind of self-confidence that, uh, that I was just talking about. Right. If that's what we're talking about. And, and why do you hold on to that? I try not to, but it's just... It sticks. It just sticks. You know, I built myself up like that. My whole oh, life. okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. And what would happen if you let it go? I think it would be... Um, scary for a while, but it'd be fine after. You think it would be scary to let the company go? Like it would go? be painful and scary for a while, but I think I might be, I might survive it.
I think I might be fine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I do. I understand. I totally understand what you're yeah. saying. Amazing. Um, okay. Had you thought about this beforehand? I have, yeah. And I mean, I could go on. I could go on, honestly. I'm not trying to hog the mic, but um, like I was just saying, I found myself getting good at some things, right? And then I would find a confidence in that. But I would also find myself, like I'd have this confidence in this, like, in this micro sense, where in this thing or in that situation. But if I were to step back and look at my life, it's like, why, can't, why haven't I been able to make life work? Right. So I've always yeah. known it's a false confidence. And so you have confidence with practical things like working on your car yeah. and, and doing physical things, but do you have self-confidence within? I may not even know what you mean by that, to be honest. Oh, because okay. I have, um, I, 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 I have now like a sort of, it feels like I have a, like a safety net. I don't know how to explain it any other way than that because I feel like I can't go back. And th what I'm talking about now is the spiritual stuff. I'm talking about right. inner spiritual stuff. And I've seen that really nothing is a big deal. Like I really feel like that. I really yeah. believe that. And so that to me is a sort of confidence. And, but then there's other things like a self-confidence. When you say that word, other things come to mind. And that's a behavior and an attitude. And that's not something I have at all times. Right. You know what I'm saying? And why not? Um, since examining myself, I think it's come from, it's what we talk about. <laughs> it's what we talk about. The <laughs> thoughts, the freak, the, <laughs> I was going to say freaking. Sorry, James. <laughs> the freaking <laughs> thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> it's, and, 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 and I noticed the other day, too, just this week, and I've been noticing this, to be honest, but I, like, I really saw it, how um, there was this moment, I don't want to explain, I don't want to say too much, but there was this moment I was sitting alone, and I had this moment, and I'll just say this, I'll just say this about it. In that moment, I had this like fear come over me. Yeah, what? I had this fear come over me. Yeah. And this fear made me want to, and it told me to do something about it. And, it, and in that moment, I saw almost like all the past fears that I had, like all my, all my life. Yeah. And I realized that I've been like motivated by fear. Mm -hmm. That it's like, I'll just wait, I'll just be chilling, 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 and I'll be like, let things go, laissez faire with life until it's like something makes me scared. It's like, now I have to do something. Interesting. So, I mean, I can go on. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I think, uh, though, your question, though, has been really interesting this week because, and ha this is how it is with every question for me. It's almost like uh, I don't answer these questions to sound good or smart. I just realize how messed up <laughs> life is and me. And I think in that r realizing, something's happening. Something yeah. is happening. The one thing I realized about life is that we really don't have any problems at all. In reality, we don't have problems. And in that fallen state, what we do is we keep repeating the same thing over and over again. You know, you get a divorce because you and your wife fought all the time, always fighting and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I'm getting rid of this woman. This is not working. Or the lady said, I'm getting rid of this man. This, we fight too much. We argue too much. This is not going to work. And you would think that they would learn a lesson in that situation. But they don't learn the lesson. This is too much problem. I'm not doing this again. But they'll go right out and marry somebody else and have the same problem happens over again. If you really look at your life, if you really pay attention to your life, all you're doing is repeating the same thing. That's all. It's like you don't just let you don't see what's going on, so you don't let one thing happen and be done. But because you don't see what's going on, you go into another situation. It's the same thing over and over and over again. Have anybody noticed that about their lives? Yes. Isn't that crazy? And then the devil tell you, that's what made me think about what Nick just said, the devil tell, me, tell you that, me or anyone, that you have problems. You need to solve these problems. And you're like, oh yeah, I do. And then you freak out, you get afraid, 
and then you tell yourself, I will never do this again. Lord, help me out of this problem. I will never do this again. But as soon as that is over, you just go and repeat it in something else. Have you ever questioned yourself about that? Why do I keep doing the same thing over and over again? Instead of just learning from it and be done with problems. But they repeat the same thing. That's because the devil tell you, you listen to thoughts, and the devil telling you when the next person will be better. The next situation will be better. You know, and you end up not seeing what you're doing, and you get into the same thing. Ain't that crazy? Yeah, it's so insane. Let me finish here, and then here, and then I come. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yes, yeah, right. So one thing about confidence, having <coughs> confidence even today, it affects me uh, because I, uh, there, there are some things I do okay, and the, uh, there's some things I don't, I, I'm, I'm terrible at, uh, I'm learning, and then some things that I do, I'm really great at, I'm real, I'm good. I know I'm good. And that from self-confidence? That, my mind tells me that I'm good and I start listening to it and then it tells me I have confidence in it and then I become arrogant. That's where you make mistakes and cocky taking chances. And I've actually, I've discovered, you know, I'm listening to the devil and, and when I'm, when the, when, it's actually pride, the swelling up. And so that pride, you know, um, when I see that, I, you know, I have to back off of that because nobody, no matter what I'm you do. I'm not quite it's, sure it's, if you have confidence now or not. Do you? So sometimes confidence comes up, you know, when I, when I listen to my ego. Confidence will come yeah, up? Yeah. And what does that look like? It, it, look, it, it says you're good. And then it'll go you away? You do that well. No, it says, hey, you do that well. You're doing good. Look at that. There is nobody better than you. That voice comes to me in my mind when I can see that I'm doing something well. And, and, and you know, it's a And trick. you're talking about in a physical sense, right? Physical, exactly. But I'm not saying. talking about physically. Physical confidence? Because we, we should know how to, you know, do practical things. I'm talking about living this life this, this is without why. any concern about anything. What other thing, or what you think, or what tomorrow's gonna bring, or trying to hurt somebody's feelings or not hurt them, just simply living your life. Do you have the confidence to do that? Yes. You do? Yes. Okay. Yes. But I'm telling you where I went wrong when I, when I listened to that other part of me, to, it's tricking me, it's trying to make me fall, it's, it's trying to break me down. Oh, okay. So that, that was happening like that, and I'm re I can recognize it, you know. Uh, it's kind of like believing you're God. Okay. Amazing. Interesting. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just realizing, listening to everybody, that there was a part of me that heard this question last week through the intellect and decided right away that self-confidence is a worldly issue and in spirit, I just am and just kind of just sat with that and didn't really speculate too much until like <laughs> what really happened this week is that I watched exactly, you know, I'm repeating what I said at the top of this service, but you know, I watched the world dictate that inner peace, that self-confidence about myself, yeah. you know? And so I guess without even really thinking about it too much, I really saw myself in action. And you just said something about, you know, haven't you ever looked at your whole life and wondering why things aren't working? Yes, and I, I would even say as an adult, as it maybe applies to self-confidence, I can see, and I've been able to see for many years, like there's a part of me that is still really immature, like a 13-year-old as it applies to self-confidence. Yeah. And it's not even like me walking in a room or me ho holding a conversation. It's what I said just a moment ago about the world dictating, like if I have X, Y, Z, or if my bank account looks like this, or, yeah, you know, that's very, 
it's really immature, you know what I mean? I mean, well, it's a lot of different things, but I guess as it pertains to self-confidence, like that's, <laughs> that's like a, I'm a grown woman. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like letting yeah. the world dictate to me, well, you have this job today, so you should feel this way, and now you don't have this job today, you should feel this way. Like, so, I don't know. I mean, I guess when I heard self-confidence, I th thought, I guess it was like my ego, and I, f I don't know. I, I guess I'm just, I'm getting mixed up in this whole conversation, and I, I would even dare to say the devil doesn't want me to see this. Like, I'm feeling confused. He doesn't want you yeah. The last thing, <coughs> the last thing Satan wants, evil, evil spirit wants, is for you to see who he really is. That is not you. It never been you. And he works overtime to, and he brings a little demon to make sure you never, that's what, you never get past this point. He wants your soul. He's not playing around. He's evil. And he doesn't want you to sit still as, as uh, the anchorman was saying earlier, sit still and be alone. He doesn't want you to be in a room by yourself. He wants something or, or himself to distract you. Because if you ever see that it's not you, and you will if you stay with it, he got to leave. And it's interesting to live a life with no thoughts at all. It's like, and you, you still do your little practical things, but it's interesting to be able to live with no thoughts. If people understood that all thoughts are wicked, and you must die from them to be free. And so when you do look at the news and all oh, this mess going on and economy bad and the, the experts telling you, you gotta, we're not gonna be able to use dollar bills after a while and a war is coming. When you look at that stuff, you're just looking at crazy, insane people and you're not moved by it at all. So you don't feel like you gotta go dig a hole right away and hide your money or your world is coming to an end. You don't feel it. It's, it's like looking at a bad movie. It, it, it's interesting to live, and I know what it's like to live in this world and look at the media and see what's going on around you. You just feel like you better run and do something too. And Satan will tell you, oh, you better stock up on food. You better buy gold. You better do this and do that. And then you rush out and do it, and the world doesn't come to an end. You're still alive. Yeah, I, I can see that. I was talking to my sister this week <clears throat> about this. And I think, uh, yeah, I've lived that way. It doesn't, I just look like a fool in the end. <laughs> Some of the errands that I've I run. know people who have stopped yeah. about food because somebody said the world coming to an end. They right. went out and bought a whole bunch of stuff and it rotted. Right. Right. <laughs> No, I just, you know, I, I, can, I can see all this and I, it's inside the conversation. And I do, that's, I think that's why this, these conversations, this fellowship is so important to be having this spiritual conversation about truth. Because, you know, when I'm on the phone with my sister and we're, we're discussing anything from the news to what's going on inside, like, it really does become clear that there isn't, there really isn't anything to be worried about, and it is all outside of me, and this is the most important thing there yeah. is, period. It's, it's, and it's staying engaged not only with God, um, but with other people that are really seeking truth to, re, you know, because inside of a conversation with my sister, either one of us can go right or left, and the other person will come back with, you know, with the truth of it all. Right. Um, because of that, because, and I even said to you, like, I can see the world going to hell. I mean, I, I, I think I've been able to see that for most of my life without really being able to pinpoint it, but I really, really see it. And the other night I had an experience just being out in the world at a store through a drive through and watching, like, <laughs> just really seeing the reality of what, like, there is, it is so beyond my control of what's happening. Even, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And really grasping this, like, my spirit with God, the truth, that's all there is. And that's all that is, like, if there, and you say it all the time, if we ever needed you, Lord, we need you now. Like, you know what I mean? Really. Yeah. Because it's, I don't, 
to put my faith in the world is, I mean, I might as well just light myself on fire. Yeah. You know? Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I, I, this whole thing is really interesting because I, you know, I love these biblical questions and I, and it's so interesting to see how my mind wants to receive it or, or the enemy will come up and like use my intellect, decipher it real quick. Yeah. You know, but the reality is, is I'm out in the world. I'm, I'm not of the world, but I'm participating in it. And really what happened is I saw this biblical question in action and didn't realize like that that was the biblical question until now. And then I come here and then the enemy's like, well, you're confused. You're stupid. You don't get it. You haven't done anything with your, you know, it just, I don't know if this is making it. It's amazing sense, it's <laughs> to see where you can see the devil in yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> you will see him in others. And you will see that they cannot help it. it, it they are possessed with evil spirits and don't know it. And these evil spirits drive you nuts. It's crazy how they have you just doing crazy things and thinking crazy things. And you can see it. And in seeing it, you can never, ever judge your fellow man. Because you literally see that they are driven by spirits. Just as we all have to be born again of the spirit of God. In that fallen state, we're living an abnormal life because we've been driven by spirits. And they are in the mind. And they are in the emotions. And I can't tell you the number of people I counsel with now and have counsel with. And they don't see that they, they, they are, have spirits in them. Because we've been taught that spirits are something else, I guess. I think we expect something else to be spirits. And we never, as individuals, uh, know that we are possessed. It's not about depression. It's not about anxiety. It's not about all that. It's pure, wicked spirits in us. And it talks to us, and it makes us feel the same way. I was riding down the road yesterday. And I just ride, and all of a sudden a thought came, an idea came. And when that idea came, I had a feeling. It brought on a feeling. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. It just came out of nowhere. And I had this feeling out of nowhere. And I realized that all ideas or identities. Have you ever noticed that whenever you get an idea, you get an identity from it? You either feel good about it or you feel bad about it. You get an identity from it. And I thought, wow, all thoughts are I identities. And if you really look at your life, all of your thoughts are just identities that the devil are giving you. And you're thinking that they're yours and you identify with it. Even if it's fear or not fear, you still identify with it. And to identify with it is a false identity. But if you just let it pass through you, it would be nothing. It would be just wind coming and going. It would be nothing. It's only when you hold on to it, you get that identity from it, and you think that's who you are. It's weird. I'm like, whoa, that's deep. All identities come from ideas. Idea means identity. It gives you that. And watch that this week. Every time you get an idea, you're going to get a feeling from it. And if you're not seeing what's going on, you're going to take on that identity and it's going to destroy you. It will. Do. All ideas bring on identities. Isn't that crazy? I never thought about that as ideas before yesterday. Yes. I just wanted to add that with this question, I, I, it depends on what your definition of self-confidence is. Because when the question was initially presented, my thought process went directly to self-confidence, meaning that you are making a concerted effort to focus on being some, someone you're not yeah. in a certain group of people. And that is fake. That, that's the enemy right there. Right. And I, with these questions, another thing I wanted to add is I ponder them, but I don't get too deep in that process either because all thoughts are all lies all the time. Right. And I'm always reluctant to, to think too hard on these questions because I feel like the enemy is then going to come in and have me overthinking it. So 
I usually go with my initial, um, you know, thought, I guess, or what I'm getting when you initially ask the question, right. we're here, and I, and I let it go. And, but as I'm listening to the responses here, I don't correlate self-confidence to success. I've done things where I was so-called confident that failed, so-called failed. Right. However, it doesn't impact me. I just continue to push ahead and it doesn't make me feel badly that the thing failed. It just pushes me to propel forward and do something different now. So I just, I, I think that the definition of confidence, the answer depends on how people perceive what that means to them. Right. When I speak of, when I ask the question, I'm thinking spiritually. Do you have the confidence to just let go of all thoughts and let life happen? Just let it happen. And most people don't have that. And, and the, world, the world, it teaches you to build, oh, you need to have self-confidence and to be motivated. You can do it if you're trying to build a house or build a business or whatever, right? They say, you can do it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about spiritually, do you have the confidence to doubt all thoughts no matter what, no matter what they tell you, good or bad? Do you have that kind of confidence to let go and just let life happen? Because what I realized too is when you let go, as Sean and I was talking about the other day, everything is it's interesting. Everything already is. There's nothing, there's no such thing as success or failure. There's no such thing as black or white. There's no such thing as up or down. There's no such thing as rich or poor. All these illusions that we're living because we're living in our imagination where the deceiver dwells, and then the deceiver, which is a wicked spirit, is using others because they have been deceived too to motivate us, to make us be deceived even more so. It's weird how to, but outside of that dark world, everything is already. It's, just, it's right here, it's right now. There's no need to take thought about it or anything. And, there's, and you, would, you would never ever compare yourself again. You would not be two, you would be one. Within yourself, you would be one. And there will be no division within you. And so there will be nothing to compare yourself to. It's interesting to live without thoughts, I'm telling you. It's like a whole new, it is the real deal. It will be heaven on earth instead of hell on earth. People who are divided within themselves, they're catching hell on earth. This is hell. But the hell is inside of them. And you can either have hell on earth or heaven on earth. But as long as you are divided, up and down in your thoughts and feelings and feeling good, feeling bad, judging yourself and judging others and whatever you're doing, you're going to have hell on earth. It, when Christ said it was done, he meant it was done. It's done. And a job and all that are just physical things that we need to survive as a person on earth. You know, you got to eat, you got to want somewhere to lay your head, but that's nothing to be worried about either because you always have that too as long as you want it. If you don't want it, you don't have to. The bombs out there, they don't want it. They love being bombs. And they think that you owe them something as a bomb. You're supposed to take care of me. You're supposed to give to me. I'm poor. They have owned that, and now they feel like they're better than the ones that are given. If they did, they wouldn't get mad at you when you didn't give it to them. Or they would get up and do for themselves. But they feel alive being a bomb sleeping on the street. A drug addict feels alive. He feels like that's real life. He doesn't want you to tell him to stop being a drug addict. That is his identity. Isn't that amazing? Everything is fine. There's nothing to think about at all, except for practical thinking. It's really fine. And you would never think about what others think about you. Because it's always been you thinking that. Not, you know, whatever they think is on them, but what you think is what they're thinking and what you're thinking. It's not no one else. You can't help anybody else. 
it's like I was saying to Alice, I would love to I wish Alice well. And I know what it takes for him to overcome that. I know he's been driven by the devil. And all he had to do is be still, let go, stop believing the lies in the head. But he believed everybody out there, he go to different people and get different advice. Not about to put him in a crazy house. He getting other people advice, and their advice is coming from the devil. But he will not trust within. He won't trust within. He just keep roaming the earth, creating other problems, repeating the same thing over and over and over again by giving different advice from different people, the same advice, keeping him in the same hole. Isn't that amazing? All thoughts are all lies. All thoughts are identities. And as long as you identify with the identity, the false identity, you never going to, it just ain't going to work. You're never going to have, and saint ha peace on earth, and saint has something to say about everything you do. Everything you do, he has, some, whether it's good, so-called good or bad, he's going to feed you his ideas about it. He won't let you be free until he depart from you. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? It, we are a spirit. We should be living as spirits in human bodies. The body is just something we live in, but it's not who we are at all. Not one iota. You've just been turned away from that, and you're thinking that is you. And you're trying to make everything out here work for you, and it ain't going to work for you. It ain't out there. It's not out there. It's in here. It really is. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm finished. But uh -oh. the last thing I want to say is just for the record, based on this uh, amended <laughs> clarification I've gotten, um, I would have to say I'm a work in progress Yes. in terms of that question, because the thoughts are crazy. I'm constantly having to look at those as the weeks go by, but I'm getting better. So One thing about when you overcome the thoughts, there's no struggle in life with anything. Everything just happened for you. Even if you are doing physical work, it's no struggle with that either. You just do it. You take and you do a good job. Isn't that amazing? You got to watch those thoughts. Just know they're not yours. You are not your thoughts. And there's nothing that any human being, no, you can't get enough love in the world for the, to fix this. If somebody loved you night and day and morning, and it, it, it ain't going to help. All you do is want more love. That ain't enough love. I, I'm still feeling this way. You can't get it from someone else. It doesn't exist. Anyway, yes, sir, and then here. Oh, I, I was just going to say, I was just going to say about confident, and doesn't that that like come from confide as well and con to confide in someone means to trust or trust something and I, I don't trust I don't trust no one one I older <laughs> like, right so doesn't confident and confide mean to confide it's like to trust something it, nothing's ever certain nothing's ever certain so I don't know that's just I just I was I thought of it yeah. okay maybe it was Satan maybe it was just a practical maybe it was I was just listening to them in Which all honesty, you guys could talk. <laughs> I love it though. I love it though. In it's all honesty, a, yeah. in all honesty, there is nothing in your life that you need to confide to anyone. Because just think about it, they can't do anything about it anyway. If it's spiritual and it's an illusion, what's the purpose of confiding, confiding to anyone else about it? All you're doing is set them up to tell somebody else and try to hurt you with it. That's all you're doing because their mind is wicked as well. And so say what you, you got to tell somebody. <laughs> you got to tell somebody. You're like, no, I'm not going to tell it. And then you go for a few days and say, to say you got to tell somebody. And you go, I can't, and you go and tell somebody and then they use it against you. It's weird. There, there's literally nothing to confide to anyone. Because it's just an illusion anyway. All you're doing is confiding your illusion to someone else. And now they got it all messed up with their delusion. And they, they can't handle it. That's a perfect way to explain it. That's a 
Isn't that crazy? Yeah. What you tell us about about your evil for? They can't do anything about it. Oh, I got something to tell you. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about committing suicide. <laughs> you are? Yes. Okay, I won't tell anyone. And then as soon as they, they're back, it's turn, you call up Mama. Mama, Jojo just told me they want to commit suicide. Let's pray for him. <laughs> they use that. Let's pray for him. <laughs> That's the devil telling them, to, oh, tell Mama, Jojo about to kill himself so we can pray for him. It's like what you were saying about grandma. Grandmama had a stroke. She, she made it through that. She come home and take pills to try to kill herself. And now the whole family praying for grandma. And grandma don't even care about life. If grandma would care, she'd be working on her own life. She love her hell. And y'all, and the prayer that the people are praying for is in vain. It ain't gonna stop grandma. If anything, you're gonna make her Oh, they all love me. They, pr they are praying for me. And Satan so said, yeah, that's right. Why don't you take another pill? You need more love. And so she'll take some more pills trying to kill herself so everybody can gather around her even more so. But if you just let her go and die, whatever, she's less likely to do it. Because you're going to see what I'm talking about. You get identity. We all, in that fallen state, we get identities from these things. But we don't see that we're taking our identities. We call it love. We call it hate. We call it something else. But you definitely pay attention. You're getting identities. Somebody can pay you a lot of attention. You love that attention. And then if they stop paying that attention, you want to kill them. It's like taking drugs. Yes, sir. Um. What Nick and Francisco were talking about sounds like me like they're they're competent in something. Like Nick might be competent to like fix his car, or right. Francisco might be competent to do something. But what it sounds like is like the confidence you're talking about. Personally for me, anytime I had confidence, it was really like an arrogance or like an overestimation of what my real capacity was. So I try to I like what Nick says, like I still have that. It still comes up, but I like I like humble myself and realize I'm not really all that. And then uh, what you said about spirits, I remember a brief story is that I was at work and there was this guy egging me on about something he knew I cared about, but I wasn't really reacting. Yeah. But he started to ramp up. He started to get angry, and it got to a point where he was yelling at me i hate you i hate people like you and i'm just like watching him right <laughs> yeah i'm just look. i'm like i love you like you're my brother basically but he's and he had nothing he couldn't do anything about that it was just like impotent rage because i wasn't reacting and um the worst thing one the worst thing for the devil is to deal with people like that that don't react if the devil try to get you angry or try to hurt you and you don't respond to it he gonna go nuts because he needs you to respond, react, so that he can stay alive. He, want, he stay alive by sucking life out of other people, by getting them to react and reacting within yourself. If you don't react, they'll kill you. Why do you think mama get mad when you forgive her? She can no longer control you now. Well, how am I going to live if I can't live off you? If I can't get a reaction from you, how am I going to live? That's why mama get mad. Because if you think about it, if my child come to me and say, I'm sorry for resenting you, I realize now that you can help yourself. I see it in myself and I understand. Why would I get angry about my child forgiving me? That's, but, but that spirit would say, uh-uh. Don't let her get away with that. What the? You need life. Go off on her. Cuss her out. Tell her, I, I need to be forgiving you. <laughs> it doesn't, it hate it. You can test this. It hate it when you don't overreact within yourself or you're dealing with somebody else with the devil. They'll go nuts on you. And then they'll say, you 
Oh, that's another thing. They'll tell you, you made me do that. You made me feel a certain way. That's a lie, too. Nobody has ever and never will and cannot make you feel something that's not already there. All they're doing is bringing it out of you. It's already there. Nobody can make you angry if you don't have anger. No one can make you feel good if you're not looking to feel good. Or make you feel sad if you're not already sad. Just think about that. Nobody can make you feel anything that's not already in you. When you think that somebody making you feel like you're being loved, they're not making you feel like you're being loved. That false feeling is already in you. They don't love you. Nobody loves nobody. The world does not love anybody. Human beings don't love one another. Look at how they treat each other. Look how they treat each other. Where's the love in that? Look how you treat each other. Either your imagination or outwardly. You're not showing love. You may pretend that you love, but inwardly you think, I hate this dog. Who let this dog out? In your mind, you're thinking that. It's the same thing. The sin is in the imagination. It's not in the action itself. Sin is of the mind. It's the way you judge, the way you live. And you can live a free mind. You can have a clear, clear mind and not think anything about anyone at any time. And see what's going on with them. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. Uh, the other thing is that you said, like, it's so true that you'll feel something or you think something, and then the enemy, I like how she says the enemy. Yeah, the enemy says, oh, you need to tell somebody about yeah. this. You need to call someone. You need yeah. to send a text out. And then you send it, and you, nothing changes. They, they'll tell you something, <laughs> and you feel the same way. Yeah. But if you just keep your mouth shut and just let your mind clear, you do feel better. It all goes away. It goes away. But uh, it's so true. It's, once you start noticing all this stuff, it's amazing how it becomes easier and easier to resist. The one thing I want to promise you, really, and I'm not God, so I'm not doing the God thing, but we've been brainwashed and don't know it. We've been deeply, deeply taught wrong. From the day we popped out of mama's womb, they started teaching us wrong. And so when you start to overcome, when you forgive and the light shines in you, the light will kill the evil spirits and all that brainwashing is dying away with the spirit because it's the nature of the devil. It will disappear. But we've been taught wrong. We've been taught so wrong about everything. We should have never been taught to compare ourselves to anyone. We should never have been taught that there's a rich and there's a poor. We should never have been taught that there's an up and a down because we believe it. And when we believe it, we live it. And it's hell. It's hell. The devil used it against you. We've been taught wrong. We should have never been taught this stuff, but the devil's busy. And Christ said it was done. Like, the devil has been defeated, but we look out in the world, the devil is not defeated. The people are doing the devil's work. We've been taught wrong. Amazing, huh? There is no such thing as self confidence. It doesn't even exist. To go out and fix a car is a talent. It's a gift from God. He has to give, and that comes from God, to go and fix his car. Look on YouTube, whatever he does. When we do things physically, it's a, talent, it's a gift from God. Just like God's love is a gift from God. His light is a gift from God, right? And to, he's given us the ability to fix things, to take care of ourselves. This is why you don't have to go to college. Work with your hand, you'll be fine. Get a trade. You don't need somebody to educate you away from a trade and depend on them by telling you <clears throat> you need a degree. You don't need a degree. In all reality, if you want to be a doctor, you could be a doctor without going to college. Go on YouTube. <laughs> Just learn how to do it. We have the gift. We have the spirit of God in us, and he will teach us all things. But we don't trust that. We trust the outer more than we do the inner. We don't trust the inner at all. We would rather go to an expert and they say, well, we don't really know what's happening. We don't know what's wrong. But here's some medication anyway. 
and now you walk around looking like a zombie. Isn't that crazy? We, we are already free, y'all. There's no such thing as self-confidence. I talk with people about, do you have self-confidence? Yes, I do. But I'm afraid. I still feel fear, but I have self-confidence, they say. How can you have self-confidence, and where do you get it from? I'm like, where do you get it from? I don't know. I just work at it. Where are you going to work to get self-confidence from? And if you know that it never lasts anyway, you feel confidence inwardly for a minute. And then a situation will come, and the confidence is gone. Because it's an illusion. Everything that's good, everything that's real, only comes from God. And there's no, he says, fear not. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's up in the mind. Yes, Alex. And there's something, there's nothing to be, it's so interesting. There's nothing to be afraid of at all. You don't need to trust people, and you don't need not to trust people. You just need to be. Yes, Alex. Do you have love? Are you judgmental? No. You have no love? No. Human you, beings don't have love. So you don't have love? No. So what do you have? I have love from God, and that's what's leading my life now. Human beings don't have love. So you don't love the congregation? I love them by not hating them. I don't resent anybody because now I can see. And once you can see, and you see that you have nothing. Of yourself, you can do nothing, and of yourself, you know nothing. And then you get rid of that anger, and then the light will come on, and you start to overcome all this fear and this fake love and this worry and trusting other people and all that, all that disappear. And then you have the love that is in you from God, but it's not your love. You would take no credit for it. And love is not a feeling. What is it? It's a light. It's, a, it's life. It's a normal way of living. Are you judgmental? No. Nope. Are you judgmental uh, of me? At you? Yeah. Not at all. I just, I wish for you, I wish you well, that you would let go of the imagination so you can have a life. You want life. That's why you come. You want life, but you're still trusting the thoughts. And there's nothing that anyone can, you hear all the testimony, right? We all go through the same thing. It's just that some people finally say, you know what? I give up on the thoughts. I'm going to do the silent prayer. I'm going to let go and see what happens. But you trust the thoughts too much. I'm not, I'm not, I don't resent you for it at all. I just know there's nothing I, I can do about it. And we can't do anything about somebody. We can't even, somebody uh, was yelling at me the other day. And they're like yelling at me, right? And then, I mean, like really yelling. I said, you sound angry. You sound angry. I'm not angry. And they, st they got words. They start cursing. And they just, I mean, and so I just looked at them. And they were cursing, and, and they got worse. And they just got worse, but I felt nothing about it because I realized it wasn't them. And that's what's going to happen when you wake up. The light is your protection from the world. It will allow you to see what's working through people because you can see what was working through you, and then you won't feel anything about it because you know they can't help it. It's a, once you know that, Alex, it's impossible to judge your fellow man. You cannot judge. When God said, don't judge, unless you be judged, that's serious too because when you... If I was judging you, I'd be judging myself. Because what you do to others, you're really doing it to yourself. Do you feel like you're being judged? I don't know, maybe. No, you're not being judged. Okay. Everybody in this room want you to be fine. They, they all told you how to be fine. You gotta do what they're doing. You gotta do the silent prayer. You trust in the darkness of your imagination. You trust thoughts. Do you notice, have you noticed that all you trust the thoughts? I'm worried about it. I'm not going to be committed on Monday. And, and where is Monday now? Tomorrow. Are you committed right now? No. You're not in jail tomorrow, right now, right? Or in a mental place right now, right? No. 
And, and where is tomorrow? In the future. And where is that? It's 12 hours away or 24 <laughs> hours away. So why are you worried about something then rather than living right now? Because I'm worried I'm going to say the wrong thing to the, wrong, the therapist. But why, not, why worry about that rather than live right now? The therapist is not here, right? No. And you're not in the, in the place right now, right? No, she's going to phone me. So what? She's going to phone me at 10 in the morning. I know, but Alec, see, you're missing the point. Tell him. Maybe a white guy tell him. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're just trying to say that everything is exactly as it should be right now, whether you feel like it is or not. And when things aren't going your way, I mean, I know I've found that when things aren't going my way, I see that even more clearly than when things are going my way. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's all we're trying to say. And when you love people, you let them suffer. This is something we've said in the past. When you love people, you let them suffer. So, you know, we've said everything we need to say as far as giving you quote unquote advice. And, um, you know, if you, if you take it, if you don't take it, it's not really, you know, on, on us per se. Do you see the thoughts telling you right now, reminding you that tomorrow the league is going to call at 10. Tomorrow they're going to put you away. Tomorrow, do you hear the thoughts telling you that right now? Yeah, I guess so. I'm sorry? Yeah, I guess so. I'm sorry? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I guess so. And who is telling you that? Is it you or something else telling you that? My insecurities, doubts, fears. No, who's telling you that in your head? Who's talking to you? Satan, I guess. And do you, are you convinced it's Satan or are you just kind of guessing at it? I guess it's Satan. Is it you? It's not my normal me. <laughs> you have a normal? Yeah. What's your normal you? When I had a job. Oh, amazing. Um, is it you telling yourself about tomorrow? In some ways it is. It's not you at all. Would you tell yourself that and bring on fear? Don't you feel afraid right now, thinking about tomorrow? Yes. Why would you tell yourself something like that that would bring on fear? Because, I don't know, because I'm not worthy or something, insecurities, et cetera. So I now? Mean, I'm not worthy, insecurities, et cetera. Is it possible it's not you telling yourself that? Well, it's, it's my, I mean, I'm still suffering from my Is upbringing. it possible that it's not you telling yourself those things about tomorrow? Yeah, I guess it, you could say it's Satan. Is it possible it's not you? Yes. And so why not give it a try to see if it's really you by letting it pass? Don't think about it. Why not let it pass? See what happens. Because I'm too nervous. So I'm shaking. And, and you're shaking because you believe in the, the talk that's happening in your head about tomorrow. Do you realize that? Yeah. And so it's not you telling yourself about tomorrow, right? Well, it's me and, and Satan together, I guess. It's not you at all. Who, is you, who, who, who are you? Well, I'm myself. And who is that? My name. You are your name? Yeah, Alex. And, and how are you your name? Well, that's my identity. So you get your identity from your name? Yeah. And, and what good does that do you? Not much right now. <laughs> what would happen, then I got to move on. What would happen to you if you had no thoughts about tomorrow? What would happen to you? I'd be free. You'd be what? Free. You'd be free. And who you prefer? I prefer to be free. So why don't you take it?
Okay, just it's hard to be like that when I feel I'm in the mud. It's not hard to be like that. If you want to be that, you can be free. It's not hard to be free. It's hard living in your thoughts. Yeah. Freedom is not hard. There's no pain in freedom. There's no feelings, there's no worry, no doubt, no pain. It doesn't hurt. Living in your head with the devil hurts. Yes, it does. And so you prefer the devil? No. Then take freedom. All you do is take it right now. Okay. Let the thought go. Let tomorrow go. So what now? Let tomorrow go. Let the thought go about tomorrow or anything else. Yeah. All you do is let it go or you can be free. Freedom is right now. Let the thought go. Relax. Just relax. Take a breath. <sighs> relax. You relax? It's hard. And, and this is so good because this is every human being on earth. It's, every, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's really every human being on earth. It reminds me of, again, I mentioned this before, when Christ saw the, the guy that couldn't walk. He, he, had, he, got, he was something happened when he was a kid, and he couldn't walk, and he got old just laying there. And Christ went by, and he asked Christ, I don't know how to come, but he asked Christ to heal him, or he'd he been a man. Oh, he wanted Christ to have him fall into the water because he thought the water was going to heal him. But... Christ said, do you want to walk? He like, yes. Yes, I want to walk. Come back. Hey, mama, come back up here. Uh-uh, come mama. back, mama. <laughs> mama going to go and make it. Mama going to free you up, getting close to you. <laughs> the devil said, go back there and soothe him. <laughs> Set him free. <laughs> <laughs> don't let him sit back there by himself and feel all this pain and mama jumped up and ran back there it got real close <laughs> and so uh, and, and Christ, Christ said to the man he was sitting there y'all remember the story right and Christ said do you want to walk he's like yes and Christ said well, get up and walk Let's get up and walk. And he did. That's the same thing with Alice. All Alice needs to do is get up and walk. Get up and walk. But he'd been so crippled, paralyzed in his mind forever, he can't doubt the devil right now. All you're doing is believing the devil, and you're not walking. You can get up and be free right now. You really, really can. It'll be no past, no future. All is right now. Do you see that you're, tr you're holding on to the thoughts of the devil? Yes. You're afraid to let them go? Yes. And what, and your, what are you thinking will happen if you let it go right now? Don't even think about tomorrow. And just live this moment. This moment. I would have no self-destructive thoughts. So why don't you let them go then? Because you're right. Just haven't been, just haven't been myself since the 2nd of January, since I was unemployed. No, you haven't been yourself in the last, what, you 80, you say? I'm a senior. <laughs> senior years, <laughs> all your life, you've been lost in imagination. You're not being yourself at all. But anyway, you can be free right now, it's up to you. And, not, and then tomorrow will not turn out the way you think it's going to turn out. But if you think on this, it's going to turn out the way you think it's going to turn. Because you bring it upon yourself. You are creating your own next moment right now. Because you won't be free. You're setting it up to turn out the way you think. You're, gonna, you're making it do it in your own head. It's in you. And you're thinking that, and that's where it's going to go. If you didn't think that, it wouldn't go that way. 
but you're creating your own world right now. Yes, isn't it? Isn't that amazing, Alex? It, it, he, he won't get up and walk. What is it like seeing that? And then I'll, I'll come back to you, Nick. Seeing that with him, what is that, what is that for you? to put into words. You can see what's going on? Oh, yeah. And what do you see? I mean, if he says he's fine, then he'll be fine. You know? And then he won't have anybody else to answer to. Yeah. He won't have to answer to his therapist. He won't have to answer to his doctors. He won't have to answer it. To if anyone. he says he's fine, then he'll be fine and he'll get to live his life. But because he didn't say those things, you know, because he got caught up in his thoughts and he felt those things and said those things, then that's what he became. And the devil and tell he, him, that's well, where he is now. The devil tell him, well, you can't be yourself because you don't have a job. If you stop thinking about this therapy thing tomorrow, what's going to be? You need a job. And so he go off from one devil thought to another devil thought to another devil thought. And then if he got a job, the devil tell him, well, you're still not happy. you old man, your apartment dirty. And then he got to think about that and, and feel like he's no good from that. Every human being go through that, Alex. Not one that doesn't go through that. A few overcome, but most don't. And they're st I'm looking at you, you're stuck in your head. You won't get up and walk. I see it so clearly. You're locked in your head. You think that those thoughts are yours. You think that they're true. And every human being think that. Anytime, that's what I said, when you have ideas like that, you, it becomes an identity. All ideas are identities. Some people think, oh, if I got a family, I will feel better. If I did better than my parents, I'm going to make some babies so I can treat my children better than my parents. That's a setup. That's an idea. And they get the family to screw up the kids. And the kids hate them. All ideas. Do y'all see that a little bit? Yeah. All ideas are identities. And it got so many identities. You got so many identities. And you can't even see the sky for the smoke in your eyes. I miss my son. I do. You miss your son? Yeah. See, the devil just told him that. And the devil gave you one bad idea after another one after another because he won't let you get up and walk. But I wish you well with Alan. If you ever get tired of suffering, you ever get tired, relax, let go, do the silent prayer, and let the thoughts go, and you'll see freedom is right here. It's never been the way you thought that it was. It never has, man. You've been, you're being lied to. Let me take Nick and then here. Yes, Nick. Yeah, you, guys already, you guys already said it. It's called being a self-fulfilling prophecy. What you speak, what you, what you say, you know, when you say I, it, it becomes true. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You, you would think, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Stop me, if this is, stop me if this sounds bad, but <laughs> you would think like if you could just drop, and I'm saying you to Alex, but this is all of us, if you could just drop, if you could just drop the thoughts about it, you wouldn't give up control of your life like that. Like, you know, you would just not go to the therapy. <coughs> and let's say, okay, now you're stuck, now you have to go, then you would just lie. <laughs> you would just say, I'm fine, and then they won't put you in the mental hospital. <laughs> and my point is just simply right. like, my point is just, <laughs> stop me, stop me if I'm, like, is this wrong what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like, my point is simply is like, you wouldn't give up control of your life like this. What he's saying is that if, if Alec was, or anybody wasn't in their thoughts, then the world can't control you like that. The world can't say I'm putting you in a mental institution. Right, he's saying that. But because he won't give up the thoughts, he won't take him. Because you're right in that. Let's say Alec gave up the thoughts right now and he became free. That situation would not happen. I don't know if he'll have to lie, but it will not happen. He will not end up in a place tomorrow. But because he's so living on it, 
It's going to happen. Okay, maybe not lie. You would know the right thing to say. You would see the right thing to say. The light will guide you out of the darkness. It really will. It's so, it's, it's crazy. What's so crazy about it, though, is that all the identities we have, I didn't know one human being could have so many identities that we identify with everything when we are of the world in that fallen state. Isn't it like, let's think about it. Think about what you have identified with all your life. From one thing to another. See, so just told well, you miss your son. He don't miss his son. That's a false feeling. It's a false feeling. Let me take here, and then here, and then we'll start one now. <clears throat> but he's not, Alex, you're not the only one. Every human, God said we must be born again, right? And salvation is of the heart. And he said every human being must be born again. We all go, uh, get, fall into a fallen state when we're born. But I didn't know the depths of how we get locked in the mind. Though. I didn't know it was in the mind like that. I just didn't know. I thought it was something else because we've been told it's something else. And we trusted the devil all our life. Isn't that amazing? We were never told it's in the mind. Well, I wasn't. I was told you need to pray hard. Ask God for mercy. And, and pray to the Lord for this or that. And that didn't work. Pray in the mind, too. Yeah. Yeah, pray in the mind. Talk to the, They tell you that you can pray in the mind, meaning that you can be thinking about prayer, and, you, and the devil will quote the prayer for you. Yeah. And you're praying in the mind, not knowing it's the devil. You can be praying to the devil, thinking you're praying to God. What a mess. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Down on my bending knees, humble and holy, coming before your merciful grace. Lord, remember my mama. My mama did well. My daddy left her. She raised us. Have mercy on mama. And remember daddy. Daddy was a drug addict. <laughs> daddy was no good, Lord, but have mercy on daddy. And Lord, help my humble and poor, weak and weary body. <laughs> Y'all don't pray like that? <laughs> I heard those prayers growing up. I pray, I pray white. Yeah. Those are the black prayers. Those Lord, black. Yeah. if I need you before, I, I need know. you now. If ever I need you. And the Lord said, this, said look at that stupid person. <laughs> That's a lost soul praying to the devil, thinking that he's praying to me. Oh. And then you feel good. You had that good old prayer, that feeling left. Now you feel like you're saved again. You walk down the road, by the time you get to the end of the block, you're back in hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know something? Yeah. Amazing. Oh, amazing. Yes, sir. Real, real brief. Uh, first of all, awesome shoes. Um, and I think it's like uncanny. Like ever since we've been coming here, you remind me so much of my dad. I see the situations you get into just like my dad. Like my dad was having trouble with his wife. She's, you know, he couldn't handle her and he's all controlled by her and stuff. And he's like, well, I'm gonna go to a therapist yeah. and they're gonna help me. What happened was the therapist, he said, he put his foot in his mouth and then the therapist sent DCFS to the house. Wow. And then it got worse from there. So if you would have just, my point is, is you don't need any help. You don't need a therapist. You don't need your son even. You don't need anything. You just, it's like be still and know God. You just need to, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but it's like well, everything you need is inside. Like if you just stayed home, if, if like even the physical, you don't even really need a physical. If you just stayed home, didn't go to therapy, this wouldn't even be a situation, you know what I mean? So I see that in my own father. My own father, over and over again, it's like you say, he does the same thing over and over again. If he would just be still and know God, he wouldn't yeah. need to call up everyone and their mama, he knows. He wouldn't need to go to a therapist. He wouldn't need any of that, because he'd be at peace. Especially if he understood that no other human being can do anything for him anyway. Nobody can save you as a spirit. No human being. 
to save you. Right now we're edifying one another. We're testifying, but we can't save one another. <clears throat> we're seeing that everybody go through the same thing. Everyone had the same kind of thoughts. And in these relationships, if the relationships start going bad, don't try to make it happen. Take a look at yourself to see what is wrong with me that I'm personally being affected by this person, whether it's husband or wife, whatever, friends or whatever. Don't, don't even think about divorce. Just see why am I overreacting? Why do I feel this way? How come I need this so bad? And, and in that storm, like the buffalo thing, in that storm, you calm down in the storm, and the situation will work itself out. And you wouldn't get out of that relationship and go get right into another one, repeating the same thing over and over again. But ha what happens though, you get mad, or you feel like you're about to lose something, and Satan will tell you, no, go away, get a divorce, go get something else. And you end up just repeating it, no matter what the situation is. We don't have to be repeating things over and over again if we stop listening to the devil. We are free right now, really are. It's in the mind. Yes, Frankie, last word, and then I got it. Yes, man, let me so take this. This is a real trippy kind of thing, uh, Alex. We're not judging you. Exact same thoughts you have, I have. On Monday, somebody dropped off uh, six bicycles, and you said you lost one, and somebody had given you one. <clears throat> Possibly, could, I could give you six bicycles. Um, you know, come out of your thoughts, and whatever thoughts that you have is the same thing. The devil's telling you that we're looking down on you. No, we're just like you. We have the same thoughts, and we think our voice is us, and you're listening to it, and I'm listening to it, but I have a chance of pulling back from it in prayer and, and being still. So just want to encourage you, you know, to be still, practice it no matter what. Thank you. Right here. Just briefly, I wanted to say um, to the point on Alex and the therapy, the therapist, what Nick said totally resonated with me in terms, I don't know about the lie part, but my, my thing is that many of these therapists could use a therapist, hey, they, you know, I mean, matter of fact, I, they, they are seeing therapists. I know therapists who are seeing therapists. Yeah, I have <coughs> several therapists acquaintances and they are a little different I'll yeah. say so uh, you know just I wanted to make that point we can all relate to you it's just an extreme that you're talking about and you're not you're not you're not doing the silent prayer period end of story done um, do that your life will change the next thing I wanted to say briefly is um, over the, a few days ago, I started, I was receiving all these calls and texts and my phone was just blowing up and I learned that a, a former friend of mine had been found deceased in his, in his car. And the speculation is that, you know, he may have taken his life because he was a young guy. And I was thinking about you and this and what you tell us regarding the thoughts and regarding how no one loves anyone. Yeah. I'm getting these phone calls and these people are, you know, on the verge of tears and talking about the situation as if we just hung out yesterday. I haven't seen this guy in over a decade. Doesn't mean I don't care and that I didn't feel, you know, that you know, wow, right. it's unfortunate yeah, that he absolutely. felt like he needed to do that. But it just really um, brought many of your points home. And I did start to feel sad and I had to interrupt that thought. And yes. this may be helpful to you, Alex. I had to interrupt those thoughts and say, wait a minute, Danielle, why are you sad? What are you doing? Stop. And I immediately stopped. Those feelings immediately left and I was on to the next thing. That's right. Absolutely, 100%. <clears throat> the devil tell you, oh, they found so-and-so dead in a car. You haven't seen him in years. Immediately say, oh, poor so. And now you feel sad. And now you feel like you care, but you really don't care. You wish him well and all that, but it ain't all that. It's just Satan tell you that. It's amazing. <clears throat> 
excuse me, that the devil can tell you to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And you'll believe it's you and commit suicide. How crazy is that? That's not you telling you to commit suicide. You would never tell yourself to commit suicide. You would never tell yourself anything that would bring pain to you. If you were in control of your thought, all of your thought would be good. Every thought I get would make me feel good. I would, have no, I would create nothing but good thoughts. But we're not in control of them. It's not us. Just think about it. Think about this week. Think about the thoughts. Pay attention to the thought you get and how they come from nowhere. They just come. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Thoughts just come from nowhere. Like, what the? Yeah. And, it, and paying attention to that is causing you to overcome it. Yeah. Because you start to really see that it's not you. I didn't, where did that thought come from? It was like the wind. It come from the, the wind is blowing. You don't know which way it's coming from. But those thoughts can come and make you want to commit suicide, and people are killing themselves, not over anything but the thought. It's the thought. It's the devil. It's evil. You're possessed. It has you doing it. The thought could come and tell you to hate yourself or hate your fellow man or to love yourself, and now you're trying to love yourself. Oh, I love myself. No, you don't. But a thought would come and tell you that. It's crazy, huh? We are possessed. Think about it. A thought would come and make you do some, and think some crazy stuff. And you think it's you. And you think it's going to be better next time. And it's not going to be better next time. It's going to be more of the same or worse. Yes, Alexa, last word. No, it's just so interesting how um, easy it is to be deceived. Yeah. How... But it makes sense, though, because, I mean, we have the nature of the deceiver in us, so it seems like it would be the easiest thing to be deceived. Yeah. And so it, it's really not surprising that these thoughts come out of nowhere to me because we have that nature already in us. It's the easiest thing in the world to be deceived. Yeah. We just have to watch, and that's it. It's crazy. We could be sitting in this room having a meeting right now. And you guys could be looking at me, talking, but your mind is somewhere else. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You want to be here, you want to hear, you want to understand, but your mind's somewhere else. Yeah. Lord, did I leave the door open? <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to call Yo-Yo after this meeting. <laughs> uh, thought, you're here in this room, you want to be here, you want to understand, but the mind could drift off to something else and you miss the whole thing. Isn't that amazing? That's my blow, and you think that is you. It's not you. We're possessed. We don't have to be possessed, though. We can overcome it with the light. So, in closing, nobody can help you. Nobody loves you. Don't be, don't be deceived. <laughs> I watched this movie last night, and in the movie, uh, near the end, the, the, the star of the movie was betrayed. He and his son were running for mayor of the city, and, and I forgot what happened. It's like the boy's daddy, his mama, turned on him, turned him away from the father, and the father didn't know it. And then the, the man, the boy, that was running against the mayor, got a, a woman. He started dating this woman. And she deceived him. And in the end, the father said, almost all the time, it's the people you know, your friends, who deceive you, not, not your enemy. It's, it, most of the time, it's the person you know that deceive you and not the person you don't know. It's amazing, huh? It's so real. It's so true. I was thinking about how... Um, you know, there are people who hate my show, or they hate me because I'm conservative or whatever. They hate me, but the interesting thing about it, they follow me everywhere. <laughs> Literally, they, they'll call my show just to yell at me. <laughs> they, and, 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 and I thought about that, I'm like, wow, look how the devil is controlling this person. 
They hate me, but yet they follow me, yet they call me to say they hate me. And that's possession of the mind. The devil got their mind. Because if I hated somebody, I'm going to leave them alone. Okay, I hate you, I'm done. But they are, the hater will follow me. And I don't even know they're following me until I hear about it sometimes. And they were chasing, I saw a movie like that one, some movie. It was with that guy you were telling me about, the, the smart white guy. No, uh, Sean. Who were we talking about who we were talking about? Oh, Shakespeare? By? Shakespeare. It was one of his movies. It was a movie like Shakespeare movie, right? And one guy was jealous of the other guy. And the other guy was just living his life. And this jealous guy followed him all through life, trying to hurt him. And then in the end of the movie, they met up some kind of way. And then and the jealous guy asked the guy that he hated, did you know that I was jealous of you all my life? He's like, no, I didn't know that. He's like, you didn't know it? He's like, no, I was just living my life. While the jealous guy is suffering, trying to hurt yeah. the person that he hates. The other guy just was living his life. He didn't give room to the devil. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And so the people that hate me, they be calling me and following me, not knowing they're possessed too. And the devil got them doing that. Ain't that something? Amazing. Yes, Nick. No, just to what you're saying, you know they watch every minute, too, because they'll call and they'll comment on something that happened at this certain time. It's like, you were watching, like, every episode, every minute. Right. And then some, the devil got them, so, some people are calling and hang up the phone. They'll just call me, hang it up. And the devil tell you, you're doing a great job. You are so happy. And they don't know they're possessed. So listen, it ain't out there, it's in here. Hell is in here, heaven is in here. You can, you can live in heaven or you can stay in hell. And I want you to watch, encourage you to watch all these different identities you have. Anything that you hold on to, that's your identity. You hold on to emotions, that's your identity. You hold on to fear, that's your identity. You hold on to worry, you hold on to anything. It's your identity. It's your identity. You're never going to go know God until you let go of all these identities. And if you let go of those, and I, I hear it a lot too. Oh, if I let go of my identity, who will I be? I'm afraid to let go of my identity. People are afraid to let these things go because they think they won't have anything if they let go of the false identities. They, they're, what will I be if I don't have anything? If I don't think anything, what will I be? If I don't feel like something, if I don't get an identity from something, what will I be? You see, it's amazing. All right? So listen, do the silent prayer. Watch every thought. Just watch the thoughts. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look. By the way, just live. Do the silent prayer. Forgive. You got to forgive so you can enter in. And you'll see life is really, really amazing, all right? Become your own man. Become your own woman. And I want you to watch all ideas to see what kind of feeling you get from it so that you can let it pass and ideas will not become your identity, all right? You can go and work on a car. You can do physical things without getting an identity from it if you stay away from the thought because you can get a new car and a new car makes you feel good. And you ride down the road looking around, make sure everybody looking. Because you get an identity from that. But there's a way to do that without the identity, all right? Um, <clears throat> we'll do the super chats and all that tomorrow. Ladies, no women's forum this month. I'll be out of town. I'll be back for that Sunday meeting this coming Sunday, but I won't be here for the women's forum, all right? So no women's meeting, um, women meeting. Women's form, however you say it. All right? Do the silent prayer. We'll do the super chats tomorrow. You got to become your own individual. You got to become whole if you want to be free. You can't, if you're, if you're divided, you're going to always be destroyed. All right? I wish you well. Do the silent prayer. And thank you all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, the biblical question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Sure. What's the one thing that 
is keeping you separate from God. Oh yeah, what's the one thing that's keeping you to separate it from God, keeping you separate from God? There's, there are many things, but there's one primary thing that's keeping you separated from God. Amazing. You know what that is? Yeah. What? <laughs> My relationship to money. Your relationship to money? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'll respond to that next Sunday. We are out of time. What's the one thing? There's one primary thing that keeps you separated from God. It's so interesting, too. We'll deal with that next Sunday. Say Thank you all. Say bye again. Bye again. <laughs> bye. <laughs>